Keep circulating the tapes. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rag, my gal. Sunday, you kissed my wife. Baby, my heart's on fire. We review the Select Soundwave Spy Patrol Micromaster set. Hasbro's Pulse website still offers an occasional exclusive from their Select line. And what makes them so select? Well, for starters, they cost a lot more and come in weird windowless boxes. Here's the front, here are the sides, here's the back, and that's pretty much it. So let's unbox this Spy Patrol and see if the inside looks any better. Well, that was easy, and it didn't even require a jump cut. Here we see the interior of the box. Those of you who have been around long enough will recognize the artwork here as a representation of a cassette tape, which was the best audio storage device the 80s had to offer. And nestled within this plastic caddy is an instruction booklet and the MicroMasters themselves. There are no other accessories, so you may as well stop looking. The instructions don't even list any stats or other information for the included figures. So what exactly is the lure of this set, one might ask? Well, the War for Cybertron Siege line was supposed to have released a two-pack MicroMaster set containing Generation 1 figures Rat, Bat, and Rumble. Unfortunately, owing to bad planning, only a few of these figures were ever made, and they wound up released only in limited quantities to few distributors, and never saw a full retail release. They were all snapped up by scalpers, and as a consequence, hardly anybody has them. Boo! But the Spy Patrol pack contains figures made based on the molds for Rat Bat and Rumble, which means this selects pack is about the only way anybody can get any figures that even vaguely resemble the Rat Bat and Rumble pack. At least, that's the only reason why I have them. Boo! Anywho, these are Spy Patrol figures in their alt modes, and like Laser Beak and Ravage, the alt modes are simple plastic rectangles meant to be data storage tablets, or cassettes. The cassette tape, which is colored like Terracon Cutthroat, is called Wing Thing. The black and blue one is Rumble's Generation 1 Twin Frenzy. The orange and black tape is called Scar. And the red and silver tape is called Knock. Each cassette is meant to fit in the chestal area of Siege Voyager Soundwave. Each cassette also comes with these little flip-out tabs, which will allow them to be plugged into any open 5mm port on any Siege or Earthrise figure. So you can strap them onto any figure like armor plates, or elevator shoes, or whatever. They serve no other purpose except to add to Soundwave's mix collection. They have clean paint applications, the plastic feels fairly solid, and they have enough sculpted detail to make them look like some effort was put into them. But like many MicroMasters, they look good from one side, but flip them to the other side, and the robot or beast parts stick out like a sore thumb. Starting with Wing Thing, the transformations for each of these figures are fairly simple. For the cassette bats, simply fold the bat wings downwards, then hinge them outwards. Take the bat head and kind of angle it forward on a dual set of hinges. It will fold so that it sticks and juts outwards. And then take some very, very dinky feet and flip them forwards. Same with Scar. Easy peasy. For the robot cassettes, hold them with the robot heads facing outwards. Each leg kind of slots into the side here. When transforming to cassette mode, take this tab and insert it into this groove here. That will hold it in place. But when transforming to robot, fold it outwards, hinge out the knees, rotate so that the knee is facing forwards. Fold out the robot fist, then hinge the arm downwards. Ditto for knock. 
And here is the Spy Patrol in their robot and or beast modes. Only the head sculpts seem to have any variation, with Knock having a different head than Frenzy, and Wing Thing having a snarly bat face instead of a closed mouth. Beyond that, these are repaints of the Rat Bat and Rumble figures, with the colors being the only real differences. They still have good paint jobs, and sculpting detail which is impressive given the diminutive size. The bat figures have a really tough time balancing on their dinky little feet, and no, they don't seem to be compatible with the slots in Voyager Soundwave's arm, which Laserbeak would clip into. Bah! All you can kind of do is perch him on Soundwave's back and hope that he doesn't fall over. None of them have weapons of their own and lack even the ability to hold their own weapons. But Knock and Frenzy do have Fire Blast accessory ports at the ends of their fists, so you can plug in Fire Blasts to make them look like they're shooting up the joint. Some Pile Driver accessories for Frenzy would have been nice, but no. Although there is no way to balance them in any way that looks convincing. You can point the arms downward to make it look like they're jetting around. <laughs> Scar and Wing Thing have wings that will hinge up and down at the shoulders. They will fold in and out at the mid-wing. The head will kind of waggle back and forth a bit. And these microscopic feet will tilt forwards and backwards. Frenzy and Knock have heads that will rotate to the left and to the right. They have ball-socketed shoulders that will hinge in and out, and rotate 360 degrees. There is also the joint on the inside that will allow them to square up and down. They won't rotate at the elbows, but the fists will tilt in and out as part of the transformation. Each hip will splay outwards, and also rotate forward and backward. Each knee will bend inwards over 90 degrees, so the robot cassettes at least can get some poseability out of them. Not so much with the bats, but at least they tried. <laughs> For size comparison, here is the select line next to Siege Voyager Soundwave. Here is the select Soundwave Spy Patrol next to Power of the Prime's Legends Bumblebee. Here is the select Soundwave Spy Patrol next to Siege Commander Jetfire. Makes one feel inferior. And here is the Spy Patrol fitting into an old timey boom box. The War for Cybertron Select Soundwave Spy Patrol pack is the only way to get a hold of figures that use the Rat Bat and Rumble molds, and that is the primary appeal of this set. Everyone who got skunked by Hasbro's dismal distribution model will need to pick up this set or go without. It was a shameless, cynical ploy to get people to buy a set of repaints that they might otherwise have totally ignored and Hasbro should be ashamed of themselves for resorting to such cheap trickery. The fact that they made so many of these, and none of the Rat Bat and Rumble Pack is a monument to their failure. But that said, positive aspects are that the plastic feels solid, the colors are vivid, with detailed sculpting, the paint applications are neatly done, and each one is compatible with Siege Soundwave. So I'll be strapping all of them onto him for storage, Negatives are that they have no accessories of their own. The articulation on the bats, particularly, is very limited. The transformations are very simple. And again, the only real pull for this set was created by gross negligence from Hasbro with Rat Bat and Rumble. If you have been unable to find those anywhere for a decent price, pick up this set. But if you were lucky enough to find a Rat Bat and Rumble pack, then you will find little that appeals in the Spy Patrol set. Is it worth the $20 price tag? You decide. But the insult alone pulls the score down to 6 out of 10 deaths. Turn over for side 2. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, oh baby. Turn over and tell me I'm your own.